Now, um, on Radio 2 of a morning, I play, and it's no secret, a lot of your records, because obviously over the long, weary years, I've enjoyed your work very much, and things like 9 to 5 and Jolene, but my favorite record of yours is a very gentle, soft ballad. I think you know it, and I'd like you to sing it if you can. Okay, and I would do that. And can I just say a couple of things before I go, because we might, I might not get a chance to compliment you. No, I shall drag you back to no, compliment you, I me. I know back. you will, but I just wanted to say I'm going to dedicate this to you because I had planned to do another song on the show, and you had asked me specifically to do this because they said that you had played this, and I know that you're very loved in this part of the world, and I can understand why, and if you'll excuse me, I will go sing. <laughs> come from uh, the greatest little um, chicken house in chicken Texas. House in Texas. <laughs> Actually, it did, but I wrote this song 12 years ago, and I had a number one uh, country record on this 10 years ago, um, and um, it's something that was another number one song when the best little chicken house in Texas came out, so I'm very proud of that. Yeah, it's a lovely, lovely ballad. It, the best little uh, thing in, in Texas um, <laughs> wasn't... Uh, wasn't critically very well received, was it? No, in, in the United States, I don't know about here, but it didn't get a lot of great reviews at home, but uh, it made a lot of money, and I don't care as long as the money keeps a roll with it. Would you make another movie with Burt Reynolds, or couldn't you stand the sight of him? Ah, uh, that old dreadful, unsexy thing. Mm. <laughs> Actually, he's, he's really a 
wonderful person, and he's, he takes his work very serious. And somebody said, what was it like working with Burt Reynolds in comparison to working with Jane Fonda? I said, well, I don't dream of Jane Fonda at night. <laughs> so well, I guess he's a big star here as well, huh? But Burt Reynolds? You know, the... He's not. You know the old sex He's not as big as Lewis Collins, but he's big, yeah. <laughs> uh, religion, you were saying earlier, was an important factor in your childhood. Is it still very important to you? Very important. I don't know that we call it religion as much as just my faith in God. And I grew up in a very uh, mm. religious family. My granddad is a preacher. My mother's very serious about it. And I just think that uh, through God all things are possible. But you rebelled, certainly, on the outside, didn't you? Well, I did. And when I started... Uh, wearing makeup and doing, you know, wearing the tight clothes and all that. My mother just about had a heart attack when I first came home with my hair all bleached. And she said, it must have been the devil made you wear your hair like that. And uh, I don't know where, where she got the idea to blame the devil for my hairdo, but uh, um, she got over it pretty she quick. And my, my granddaddy, who is the preacher, uh, when I started to do the best little chicken house in Texas, I went to him because I would never dream of offending my family in any way. And, and he said, well, if God can forgive you, so can I. So, uh, How did he know that God had forgiven you? He didn't. I never heard from either one of them. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> then you may take it. No news is good news. That's yeah. right. I had, to try, I had to just kind of settle for that. You were talking about the fantasy, the theme park of Dolly. For many men, you are a fantasy figure. Um, mm. did, does that mean that you get resentment from women? No, it don't. Uh, as a matter of fact, like I said to you earlier, some find me sexy, some find me ridiculous. But I find that I have more... Uh, now, I think it's wonderful that somebody can say that some, some find me ridiculous. It bespeaks a tremendous honesty. Well, it is an honesty because, like I say, I can see myself where it was. Because I'm not really your basic beauty. I mean, mine is all painted. Oh, I wouldn't powder. say that. No, well, I mean, you have to understand that I, I know myself probably better than anybody else. But women do not resent me because the fact that they can say to their husband if their husband or their boyfriend gets, if they get all out of hand they can say oh you don't know she may be completely bald under that wig or you don't know if those are for real or not so they kind of have something to, uh, you know, to, to to strike back with and i think the fact that i have been had enough nerve to uh, you know do some of the things that i've done or look some of the ways that i've looked and wear some of the things that i've worn i think it kind of in some ways, I think it gives some women a chance to say, well, if I had the nerve, I would do that. Or, uh, you know, don't get too out of hand because you don't know if any of it's real or not. So when, when you get to the stage of being old Granny Parton, <laughs> they, what are you going to do? Are you still going to wear the rhinestones? And the... Probably. Probably, if I feel led to. You know, it's kind of like one of those things if I... I would imagine I'll be a, a, quite a character when I'm older. I would love to always be able to just be whatever seems to make me happy and uh, I would li love to be able to write songs and to, to write books and be sort of like Agatha Christie and always be productive and be an advisor to other people in the business and so I'm trying to learn all I can but I'm sure I'll be as ridiculous as an old lady as I am as a young one. <laughs> Somebody said to me once, what do you want people to say about you a hundred years from now? And I said, I want them to say, boy, does she ever look good for her age. <laughs> That's sort of like I like him to think. Dolly Pop. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck with the concert on Thank Sunday. You. How many others you're doing? Thanks.